Hello guys and welcome back to another video of the Reader Journals and today I have a new segment. Before we get to the actual meaning of the title of this video, I wanted to introduce a new segment called Coffee Spill. I know no one asked for an announcement but I'm doing this segment. It's like small spoiler free reviews of books that I've read. No spoilers so if you're interested in reading any of these books, if any of my Coffee Spill reviews catches your attention, you'll be able to watch it from start to finish. No spoilers. It's just me giving you guys an overview of a story if you're ever interested, which is why I have my cup of coffee here. Ah, yes, we're gonna need coffee for this one. <laughs> so the reason for the title is because in this book, there's a few interesting blurbs in the cover and in the, in the back side of the book that I think deserve to be read. <laughs> so let's read. It says, Better Than The Hunger Games. This book will blow you away by MTV's Hollywood Crush. I honestly doubt I could believe anything like MTV. Honestly, I don't even know if I believe that. But in the back, there's someone more interesting. It says, Blood Red Road is an eerie, adventurous, dystopian fantasy. I just spoiled what the book is about, but whatever. On par with Susan Collins' The Hunger Games and Paolo Gal Gassilu I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry, Paolo. Shipbreaker by LA Times. And then that one by Publishers Weekly, which says, A natural for Hunger Games fans. Yeah, convince me not to title it this way, which is why after the, I read The Hunger Games, which we're going to get a review for that one, I just want to do a different review for The Hunger Games. I don't want to write a review just yet. I want to do a copy spill for it because I think a lot of people have already read The Hunger Games. But yeah, after The Hunger Games, I picked up reading the first book in the Dustland series by Moria Young, Blood Red Road. It's called Blood Red Road, okay? So don't get it wrong. <laughs> so yeah, this book, I think, came around the same time as Hunger Games. So it was kind of in the popular scheme of things. My sister bought it. She never read it. But I was like, okay, since it is being compared to the Hunger Games, I guess, from the blurbs on the cover, I thought, why not read it? Let's read it. Let's, let's kind of review it. And it's nothing like The Hunger Games. Right off the bat, it's just more adventuristic than actually dystopian in like The Hunger Games sense. Hunger Games is more of the dystopian type of book because it has the society versus character perspective. Like, it's Katniss against the capital. But Dust Lands is nothing ab about society versus characters. More like... I don't know. Like, I would say it's villain against character, but then there's a lot of other factors that play, that go into play, like maybe nature. But I wouldn't necessarily put that into fate. I would say it's more like character versus group versus character. Nothing like society versus character, because that's more massive. It's like capital versus Katniss. But in this case, it's, it's one character against a small group of bad characters. So what is this first book about? So this book surrounds the character Saba. Her and her brother Lou lead together with her dad, as well as her little sister Emmy, until Lou is being kidnapped by some hooded guys, and they take him away to some weird location, and so Saba adventures to find her brother once again. That's the best description that I can give you, because I could go into more detail, but again, it's spoilers. So yeah, so the way this review is going to work is going to be three sections. It's going to be plot, characters, and then some themes that I was able to kind of capture throughout the time. So make sure to buckle up for this review. <laughs> so let's get to it. To kind of give you a little warning before reading the book, this has to do with the plot because it is going to add to your enjoyment. The writing is so weird in this book. The author just went in with the kind of country-ish accent 100%. To give you some clear examples of what I'm talking about, look at this. My thoughts exactly, she says. Exactly. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> you don't write exactly like that. But, or there's this one. They're just, just lights in the sky. Oh my god. <laughs> like, seriously. What, what is going on? What is going on with the writing, Moira? So yeah, it's, it has some accent, some accent written in there. So it's a, weird at first. And another thing that will also take you aback a little bit, which took me aback a little when I was reading it, but after a while I got used to it, is that the author doesn't write dialogue in between commas, so she never specifies when those characters talk. It's all kind of written in sequence, so you have to really pay attention to every word. But after a while I got used to it, so it wasn't really that bad. I would recommend you to 
keep on reading. If it takes you aback, these details, just keep on reading. Trust me, it get, it gets better with time. Trust me. You'll get better there. So plot. <laughs> I mean, it had a good start. It set up things interestingly. I definitely had some issues at the beginning because the first like few, like it's divided in sections. So there's these sections. Each section is a different location. So the first like three sections or so were a bit slow. I honestly was a bit taken aback by that because I definitely was like, where's the conflict going to get to? What's happening? Some annoying things happened throughout the story, but I definitely thought there were some intense moments. And I liked that there was a lot of action scenes and whatnot. I liked the intensity of the plot. I liked the uncertainty of things because I definitely felt that sense of uncertainty throughout the story. And it made the story interesting. I don't know. I like that. And I like the country feel to it because it has that like desert western feeling to it so i like that because that gives it a much much broader dimension there are some things that we are going to get to in the character section which i was annoyed by but i don't want to get too deep into spoilers there are some interesting key points in the plot that i thought were interesting for instance i don't want to spoil this too much so i'm not going to give too much detail about it but there's this stone that appears at the beginning it's not a big spoiler but i don't want to spoil why this stone is important that Sava wears throughout the journey. And there's a real meaning to the stone, which I thought was interesting. And I liked it because I predicted how the stone was going to react and when it was going to react. I predicted it. I thought that was super predictable because it's such a, such a classic fictional twist, but I'm not going to spoil it. I am going to say there is an insta love here, which I am not 100% convinced. Well, I do think that the love between Sava and Jack was interesting. I also wasn't 100% convinced into it. It's very rushed. I do like Jack's personality, and I really think that his love for Sava will grow in the following books. That might take you aback in the story, but I do need to specify that because I do feel like some people aren't really into his love. Characters is where I have my most issues here. Now... The reason why I have my most issues here is because I'm going to talk about a few characters I just didn't like. Emmy. Emmy's Sava's sister. I felt like she was really annoying. She was unnecessary to the plot. Like, she was, she, she could have been an interesting character. She is an interesting character. I feel like her, her attitude and her decisiveness to be in this adventure was great, but she just seemed annoying at times and was causing unnecessary trouble. Like, I get that the author maybe was trying to emulate, if you were, if we were to compare this to the Hunger Games, maybe the author was trying to emulate a sort of Prim character. But honestly, I think Prim was 10 times smarter than Emmy. And that's all I can say. Because I could go ranting about how much Emmy just was a fool the entire time. And don't get me wrong. I get it that sometimes for plot, you need to cause chaos. And sometimes characters have to make mistakes. I get it. But sometimes... There are mistakes that are accidental in the sense that they were not on purpose, but when they caused it, they caused a whole bunch of chaos, which I can totally get. There are mistakes that they don't choose voluntarily, in the case of Prim, that she was chosen in The Hunger Games, which caused more chaos. But there are mistakes that you do out of stupidity, and they always go off the rails. I just, I hated that. And Emmy seemed to make a lot of stupid mistakes in this book. I'm not going to get to too much detail, but she was very stubborn. I personally was super exhausted of her character. But I do like, though, Sava and Emi's relationship growth. I saw some aspects of their relationship growth because at the beginning, Sava wasn't truly really warming up to Emi. But I like their relationship growth and their way of getting to be better sisters. I like her and Luke's relationship. I thought that their sibling relationship seemed pretty close. At times, I even, even felt a bit creeped out because it felt well too close to comfort. Also, I already complained about Jack and Sava's relationship. I thought they was too insta-love. But I do think Jack has an interesting personality. I liked the way he was developed in the story. I want to see more about him. I'll probably end up buying the other two books in the future. For now, I really did like his character. Again, a bit too insta-love, but I like his dedication and his wanting to be in Sava's life. I also do think Sav is a bit stubborn. She makes the worst choices and the worst decisions at the worst time. But I don't want to say more than that because she does make a few mistakes when it comes to her closest relationships and friends. So yeah, that's kind of something that kind of took me back a little. 
I do like though the free hawks. That was an interesting add to the story. I like those characters a lot. I definitely felt some weird vibes. I don't know why. <laughs> kind of gay vibes between the free hawks, but again, that was never truly developed. So I guess maybe that wasn't the author's intention in the first place. Maybe Sav is bisexual. Who knows? Anyways, whatever. That's not explicitly said in the story. And yeah, overall, I th thought that the characters were interesting. I liked the villains. The villains were definitely evil as hell. I like Mercy. I also felt like her character was a bit useless, but I do like her because she had some information that is important to the story. And yeah, the villains were evil as hell. And there's a lot of really sick plot twists in the story. But yeah, it gets violent really quick. So personally, the way I see it, the best themes that I was able to kind of catch is all on Sava's point of view or perspective. Sava is the main character in the story. She's the one that holds the entire plot together. She's the one that goes through the entire journey. And I feel like the main theme here is Sava always locked herself from actually feeling loved or appreciated in her life. She always prioritized her family first, which there's nothing wrong with that. Prioritizing your family is important, but I also feel like Sava definitely took away the opportunity to find someone else in her life to be with her. This is not a spoiler. This is just like a perspective of like, she was so focused and it's okay to be focused on a goal, but I feel like at times her goal was so centered that she forgot to have people in her life to open up her heart to talk about her trauma and what she was going through because at times she struggled a lot to think that maybe her brother was hurt or dead she had a lot of horrible thoughts about what they were doing to him and this entire journey her main goal and focus was to find him and she was so decided that at times she just pulled any person that came close to her heart away. She wasn't willing to let people in. She was just like, this is just a one side thing and that's it. But I, I like that as the story progresses, she learns to open up and learns to let her other people in and help her find her brother and opens up about her trauma and what she's going through and about how she's feeling about the situation. Because I feel like that's something that is... Hard to speak about with anyone, but I do feel like I appreciate that. Again, it, it, there's a lot of rush details in this book, but yeah, that's something that I appreciate. I think that's the major thing that I was able to get from this book, is Sava's decisiveness to her goals, but being able to open up and, and let other people help her. Because I feel like that's something that should be learned in all of our lives. We should always not close ourselves completely. Like, it's okay to have decisive goals. If you can have some extra help, Open up yourself. There's nothing wrong with opening up yourself to help or to anyone to help you. Nothing wrong with that. And that's a good thing to have. Anyways, overall thoughts. <laughs> I liked this first book. I don't think Blood Red Road is a bad beginning. There are some flaws to it, but I do have hopes for the rest of the series to improve. Sometimes book improve within the second book and maybe the third book. But in this case... You know, because in the Hunger Games, I think the story really improved through Catching Fire. Catching Fire definitely amped things up to an 11. But, I don't know. We'll have to see once I get my hands on the second book, which I have no idea what it's called, but I'll just leave the cover here. <laughs> I'll make sure to get the second book and read it, guys, for you. And I'll review the rest of the series if I do get myself to do it. Otherwise, I'll just do it in years later. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more coffee spill reviews. I haven't drank anything. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for more coffee spill reviews, if you want to see more of these, make sure to leave some recommendations in the comment section, which I don't know if I'll get to, because to be honest, it's a really hard poll for me to kind of go into, but... If you want to recommend me any books that you would like me to copy spill, then make sure to leave it in the comment section below. And I'll see you soon for a new video. Bye!